one of the things that happens when you begin pulling at the loose threads of Christianity is that you're exposed to the dark and dirty underbelly of the church, and you realize how many layers of lies the church had to build in order to keep you inside of the church. Let me give you an example. Matthew made a fatal error by saying that Jesus was born to a virgin in fulfillment of the scripture from Isaiah 7, 14, that says a virgin shall conceive. Now, if you're reading a Christian Bible, you'll think, okay, a virgin shall conceive. Why? Because your King James is going to say that a virgin shall conceive. But what happens when we go back to the Hebrew, the language that God actually gave the scriptures in? We're going to see that it says Ha'alma, the young woman. Now, I'm not even going to speak about the rest of the verse that was completely corrupted, and I'm not going to speak about the fact that this passage was ripped out of context. We're just going to talk about the word Ha'alma, the young woman. It doesn't connote virginity in any form. The word used inside of the Bible for virginity is Betula. That doesn't appear anywhere here. Now, because most Christians don't have access to this info, they can go their entire life without realizing that they've been tricked. But once they have access to this info, and once they begin questioning, then Christianity has to layer on another lie in order to cover up this lie. What do they do? You'll come across missionaries who tell you, you have to go look at the Septuagint. The Septuagint was done by the Jewish sages, and the Septuagint says Parthenos. It says virgin in Greek. The first point I want you to be aware of is that they're directing you away from the Hebrew scriptures. They're telling you, you have to look outside of the Hebrew scriptures, God's word, in order to validate our claim. Now, that should never happen. A translation is not the word of God. God gave the Bible in Hebrew. If you have to look outside of it, that's a serious issue. Number two, we have to deconstruct this claim about the Septuagint. According to Jewish tradition, about 250 years before the first century began, 72 Jewish scholars were forced to translate the Hebrew Bible, the five books of Moses, into Greek by King Ptolemy II. Miraculously, they all translated it word for word exactly the same, despite not having any communication while they were doing so. Missionaries latch onto this and they say, oh, the Septuagint, the Septuagint was created by your own people, and if they translate as Parthenos, that means that it means virgin, that means it was acceptable translation of the Jewish people. What they don't want you to know is a few different facts. Number one, the Septuagint of the sages was only the five books of Moses. It didn't include the book of Isaiah. Number two, that Septuagint, the proto-Septuagint, does not exist anymore. Nobody has access to it, and all scholars agree this. So what is the Septuagint that you can go online and you can order? The Septuagint, the Septuagint LXS, what is that all about? That is completely the handiwork of the church. And one of the ways that you can know that it's the handiwork of the church is that it includes books such as Tobit and Wisdom of Solomon, things that are holy to the Catholic Church, but even Protestants don't accept, and certainly not the Jewish people. Even though the translation of the Jewish sages was called the Septuagint, which we'll refer to as the Proto-Septuagint, Septuagint just became a generic term for any Greek translation, and there were many Greek translations. In Origen's days, in the second century, he even compiled a hexapla which contained three different versions of the Septuagint and his own translation of the Septuagint. Moreover, another church father of the same time period, Irenaeus, he wrote in his book Against Heresies that the translations of Theodotion and Aquila, oh, we couldn't accept those because they did not translate Isaiah 7, 14 as Parthenos. They refused to use the word virgin. By the time you get to the fourth century, Jerome was like, oh my gosh, there's so many different Septuagints flying around. This is ridiculous. And he created his own Latin Vulgate. In his introduction to Chronicles, he writes about how every different region had its own version of the Septuagint. So when missionaries come along to you and they tell you, let's look at the Septuagint, they're lying on so many different levels, and maybe they don't realize this. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they don't know that the Proto-Septuagint was lost to history, was only the five books of Moses, there were many different Septuagints, and that the Septuagint we have now is the modern-day version that was created by the church. All in all, throughout history, there have been more than 2,000 variances of the Septuagint. So you're going to tell me I should abandon the Hebrew Bible and go to your church-made Septuagint in order to believe in your claims, even though you're telling me that the claims are a fulfillment of my scriptures? I'm sorry, guys. No go.